clinical value of a flourish technique. Without that, you cannot build stable clinical results. It's foundation of entire treatment session. It's critically important aspect of clinical massage therapy. My name is Dr. Ross Ruchininov. I'm founder of Science of Massage Institute located in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this short video, we will again discuss very look like obvious thing, effleurage, but it's very frequently, in majority cases, executed and uh, taught incorrectly. And it actually disregarded by many therapists as a very basic and not important technique. I recently get called from the provider who would like to get in touch with our educational institution. And uh, her main selling point was that she developed new breakthrough technique which enhances limb drainage. When I try to figure out what it is and try to probe and I mention what you do, efflorage, you do limb drainage, she said, no, no, I am not doing efflorage. Like it is completely disregarded technical application. And that is horrible because that deprive patients from the stability of result and it dramatically decreases quality of the therapy which therapy is supposed to deliver. And that's the reason for this video because without correct application of uh, effleurage techniques you cannot move and build up clinical response. Any specific technique or modality therapist uses need to be finished with proper application effleurage technique because each modality or technique increases volume, new volume of interstitial fluid between the cells. That needs to be drained. And if you're not draining that, then you dramatically decrease the effectiveness of your technique. So right now you have therapists who are saying, I'm not practicing massage therapy, I'm practicing neuromuscular, my facial release, and I'm practicing isolated stretching. Without understanding that these are only techniques which need to be incorporated in the basic treatment session where efflorus is foundation which as a glue keeping different technical modalities together because each application of the technique or modality increases interstitial volume into the soft tissue and that needs to be drained before you expect any stability of result. If you want to decisively help patient in complex clinical cases, greatly increase your income and partner with local medical communities, please click right now at the link below in description and join us for live medical massage seminars and webinars and we will work together. Thank you and see you in the future. To illustrate you value of efflorage, we will do simple thing. We apply efflorage on posterior leg and I will apply it in the regularly seen way and then in the way which allows to do it efficiently. So let's look on the basic efflorage technique, if it's look familiar for you. Here is efflorage which is frequently used in, by the therapist. If that's familiar for you, it is completely incorrect application. Yes, I'm in the contact with the client. Yes, she feels my touch and uh, she feels interaction between therapist and the body. But from the clinical perspective, the outcome of this application equals zero. There is no drainage because every possible rule of scientific application of efflora for the drainage purposes is broken. Why it's broken? Let's look on the mistakes. First, you see position of my hands and this is where my hands finishing, am I right? And I'm going back and forth. If you're going back and forth with the same pressure, which you see here, you're not draining the tissue. You're only shaking half empty glass. You're not pouring water from the glass. From that perspective, when you're going forward, you're coming back feathering. There is no equal pressure distribution between back and forth. It's only forward and then feather. Number two, this is first pack of the lymph nodes. That's the second pack of the lymph nodes. If I start stroke here and I finish stroke there, then the actual stroke is between here and there. So this is what I actually drain. I'm not draining this part and I'm not draining that part. 
From that point of view, everything you drain bouncing back in the tissue. You would like to elongate the stroke to push interstitial fluid into the lymphatic system from the first level of the lymph nodes to the next level of the lymph nodes. From that point of view, you need to elongate the stroke. In such case, you are not starting strokes here. You are starting stroke with the index finger, flatly engage the hand, continue to go with both hands, and then you finishing with the ulnar edge. That allows you to elongate stroke on the size of both of your hands. Another aspect, everything what's happened during effleurage or lymph drainage as a part is transferring hydrostatic pressure in hydrodynamic pressure, which is actually pushes fluid into interstitial fluid in the lymphatic system before it becomes lymphatic system. From that perspective, if I'm starting my hand positioning here and I'm moving forward, you see how far my arms are? The amount of pressure here, not equal amount of pressure, which was at the beginning of the stroke, that diminishes wave, which allows interstitial fluid enter lymphatic system. From that point of view, correct application will be that you moving your body along the segment using same amount of pressure through the entire stroke. So in such case, it will be this way. That is correct application. And now let's look again. You start from the index finger, elongate the stroke, get in the flat position, pushing the tissue, keeping weight of the body over the uh, effleurage and you coming back feathering and you are leaving upper segment of the lymph nodes with the ulnar edge of the hand if you're doing flat effleurage. That allows you to drain the segment using laws established by lymphatic system and laws established by the nature. Any other application will help patient to feel better but they will never be able to feel levitated after the session because they feel actually more as a puddle of water than the easy moving body. There is another critical aspect. Any stagnation of the lymph flow or interstitial fluid affects electrophysiological events within the tissue. By correctly applied effleurage techniques, practitioners able to generate so-called streaming potentials, which is electrical events happening inside of the tissue before interstitial fluid enters the lymphatic system, because interstitial fluid takes and carries with it differently charged particles and the movement of different charged particles. If there is no correct movement, does not create streaming potentials. When you use uh, Farage correctly, you actually develop streaming potentials and normalize electrical physiological event within the soft tissue affected by inflammation, trauma, or stagnation of the fluid movement. From that perspective, that's why effleurage technique is such a critical factor in any application of clinical aspect or even relaxing massage therapy because it allows actively move fluid in the correct way. Any other application of effleurage, it will bring psychological outcome of the therapy, but it will not drain the segment. That's the beauty of the profession when it's done on the science, not on the personal opinion. Quickly review how everything drains. From the foot, it drains to the ankle joint. That's where lymphatic nodes are. Then to the popliteal fossa, which is posterior knee. Then everything drains to the inguinal lymph nodes, which is on the front. Stroke from the thigh will finish all the way here to push fluid into the inguinal lymph nodes. Everything from the middle back and pelvis going into inguinal lymph nodes. Everything from the approximately this level goes in the axillary lymph nodes. Everything from the head and neck goes in supraclavicular lymph nodes. So drainage will be with the twist. Drainage from here will be with the twist. And when we look on the anterior aspect of the human body, everything which is below the navel goes into inguinal lymph node. Everything which is above the navel goes in the axillary and supraclavicular node. That pattern of the drainage needs to be always in the, in the practitioner head when he or she work on the client or the patient to efficiently drain 
soft tissue and make soft tissue elastic and uh, flexible without excessive stagnation of interstitial fluid and delay in the lymph drainage. So this is the end of our short video. Tell us what opinion you have about applications of Florash. We can discuss that. And I hope that uh, you learn important uh, technical tips which you can immediately apply in your massage therapy room. Thank you for watching and let's work together to bring your practice to the new level of medical massage application to help patients in need. See you at the next video.